All right, so welcome back to Dominion Snowline. This is not an official expansion, and this is part five. So if you have not watched part one, click on part one first before watching part five. You don't have to watch these in any particular order, but you should watch part one first. We're assuming you have at least watched part one and continuing on. Okay, so we still have a few more to go over, not too many. So, uh, this one's probably one of my most favorite cards that I've created. Cold Storage. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool picture. Yeah, plus three cards. Set aside three cards under this. So, that's kind of cool. Uh, you get three cards, and then you set aside three cards under this. And you, ha you have to. It doesn't give you the option. Then, at the start of your next three turns, you're going to reveal one and put it into your hand. If you revealed an action, plus two money, plus one buy. So it gives you a benefit for setting aside action cards for later. It will let you get them back later, and even if you can't play them later, you still get plus two money, and you get a buy. So that's a kind of a cool benefit of setting aside an action card. But if you were just to simply set aside victory cards, well, you can do that too if you want to. But it's not going to do you anything. It's not going to give you any benefit on your next turn? Probably not, unless you have some wicked strategy that I'm not aware of with a particular action card out there, and there's some out there I'm sure that could make of use of those victory cards, but, you know, still, pretty cool. Pretty cool card. All right, then we have the weasel. Now, what does a weasel remind you of? How about a swindler? Does a weasel remind you of a swindler? That's what I think of when I think of Swindlers. I think of a weasel. And this is very similar to Swindler from Intrigue. So you get plus two money. Each other player trashes the top card of their deck. You may gain a copy of each card costing up to six that was trashed by this. <laughs> and then, and then... They may gain a card with the same cost that you choose. So that's pretty cool. It's actually Swindler and Jester combined when you think about it. Because of that. But, you know, so and basically it's just like Jester. Because Jester gave you two treasure. And would also, it would also let you gain a copy of each card that was trashed up to six. But here's the thing. If I remember correctly, Jester was three to six, I think. And so, if, if a, uh, you know, a card, another card was revealed, um, it, uh, you know, so, um, so, um, and obviously, if a province was trashed, then they would just get a province back. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if it's, you just trash the top card of your deck, it doesn't matter what it is, because if it's a province... They're going to get a province back because there's not very many actions that cost eight. There's not very many other cards that also cost eight, so they're you know, so it's not a big deal if they lose a province because they're just going to get another one back, and that will limit the amount of provinces that you can purchase if you're going to play this attack card. So that's something to note. But then you may gain a copy of each card costing up to six. So if if the top card was copper, a bunch of coppers. Obviously, you may not want to get that benefit. And then, of course, they're just going to get coppers all the same, right? Same thing with estates. Although, um, you know, you'll probably end up still giving them an estate anyways because of that reasoning. So it, it's, not, it's not too overly powerful because, you know, of that reasoning. And if I remember correctly, yeah, Jester, if you did trash a copper with Jester, you could gain a copper. That's right. It wasn't three to six. But that's something to note, that that's the case. So, but if there is an action card that costs seven, then they're obviously going to get their their seven costing action card back, and <laughs> um, you can't gain a copy of it. And that's why I did it to six, because of Avalanche. So if Avalanche was trashed by the Weasel, well, the player is still going to get their Avalanche back, but... You're not going to get any benefit whatsoever. So that's something to note. The chances of that happening, though, are probably pretty slim. All right. Sled Dogs. Now, this is a card that works with your Tavern Mat, but it doesn't have... 
it does not have a, it's not a reserve card. Now, if you guys remember Miser, that also wasn't a, considered a reserve card either. All right, so let's see what it does. Plus one card, plus one action. From the supply, put an action, except reserves, so you can't do this with, with reserve cards, costing up to four on the tavern mat. Flip the journey token over. If it's face up, take an action, except for reserves, from the tavern mat to your hand. So, um, you could, uh, trash an action card, or not trash an action card, you could put an action card that wasn't a reserve with this onto your tavern mat, and then later down the road, you'd get to add that card to your hand. So that's kind of interesting, a way of getting, gaining cards from the supply. Kind of, kind of interesting, I thought. Not super, uh, it could be a little, um, what's the word? It can get a little carried away. I've played with this card a bunch of times, and it seems like it can get pretty carried away because they're just putting a card down, they're getting cards, they're putting down cards down, they're, and they're doing a lot of chaining because it's going to give you a card in an action. So if anything, I would probably remove... Um, I would probably at least remove the plus one card, if not both of these two effects, and make it... If I did that, I would probably make a two-costing card. But if I had to keep both of them, I'd probably at least make this a four or a five costing card, but to limit the amount of chaining that this is going to do. But, oh well, you live and you learn. Okay, so that's pretty much all I have for Snowline, except, as you've noticed, we have done a lot of cards that work with adventures, like the Journey Token, right? And uh, the reserve cards and the durations, obviously, which are in a lot of expansions nowadays, right? So there is one more thing I did with this expansion that was introduced, and events, obviously, right? That was introduced to adventures, and that is the Travelers. Yes, I have created a new Traveler. Now, the artwork for the first two cards was, you know, oh well, I tried to find something better, but... That's all I could get for the card that I wanted. I couldn't really find a better picture than this, unfortunately. So they're not very thematic in the first two cards since. Not what I would like, anyways. So, um, a churl is the first one. And when I think of churl, I think of a young person who's a th sort of like a thief, but not really a thief on purpose, more like, you know, because of poverty and all that. He's living on the streets, you know. And so somebody who he steals from could consider calling him a troll in the process. So that's what I think of when I think of troll. So let's begin his story. The troll. If you understand traveler cards from adventures, then this shouldn't take too long to explain. Because I'm not going to go over um, how travelers work. I'll save that for the adventures expansion. So you get a plus card and you get an action. Each other player reveals the top two cards of their deck. They either discard them or put them back in any order. You choose. And then, you may discard this from play. And When you discard this from play, you may exchange it for a drifter. Okay? So we won't, ex we won't, ex we won't explain what that means. But it does have the arrow, so that's good, right? Alright, so the churl, he uh, runs away from his town and becomes a drifter. Okay, so you get plus two treasure with the drifter. Uh, you may trash a card from your hand. If you did, you gain a silver to your hand. When you discard this from play, you may exchange it for a Mountaineer. So that's kind of cool. You get two money. You may trash a card. And if you did that, you gain a silver to your hand. So trash a copper, gain a silver, plus your treasure. That's pretty cool. And then, you know, so the Drifter eventually he becomes a Mountaineer. Alright, now we get into some more thematic towards snow line and much better than the last two cards for artwork um plus two cards either discard two cards to gain a gold or discard one card to, to gain a silver so you're gonna have to discard something if you just discard one card you'll gain a silver if you don't want that silver you're gonna have to discard two cards to gain a gold but you have to choose one or the other if you're going to play this card and then you get two cards so that's kind of cool and then, you know, when you when you discard this from play, you may exchange it for a hunter. So now the mountaineer, mountaineer has spent some time 
um, in the mountains, and he's learning to hunt. So he's a hunter now. Okay, so you get plus one action, you get plus two treasure, and then this one works for the journey token. So you flip the journey token over, it's st if it's face up, plus two cards. I didn't add that uh, parentheses where it starts face up, unfortunately. So you just have to remember that it starts face up. Or you'll have to play with another card that says it starts face up. But, you know, anyway, if it's, if it's, if it's, if it's face up, you get two cards as well. So that's pretty powerful. You get two treasure, you get an action all the time, and then every so often you'll get two cards as well. That's only, of course, if you hold on to this for a while. If you play it once, you might not get those two cards, ever. Alright? So then, you may discard this from play, you may, when you discard this from play, you may exchange it for a fur trader. So the hunter eventually, he has got a lot of fur pelts, and he's going to try to make some money off of the deal. So now he's a fur trader. Not the nicest card looking card in the world, for sure, picture-wise, but oh well. Um, fur Trader. Uh, and obviously the artwork is, you know, obviously not artwork, obviously, really. But anyways, so this is a treasure victory. And after all, I did it exactly right. It doesn't have that arrow on it, and it's not considered a traveler anymore once it makes it to this high height. Once it makes it to this. But it isn't in the supply. Just like all the others below it. Except for Churl, obviously. So you get a gold. So it's basically it's basically like a gold. It's worth three treasure. And you get a buy. But then it's also a victory card too. This is worth two victory points. For every two traveler cards rounding down. So this, this makes you think. About trying to get a bunch of traveler cards. So buying more than one of these. And buying a bunch of them. Especially if you're playing with other expansions, you could potentially have a lot of cards, and this could give you a ton of victory points if, if you have a lot of fur traders at the end of the game. But most likely, since there's only five of these fur traders in the game, most likely, especially if you're playing with four people, you'll only have one of these. So you could make this worth a lot of victory points, but you probably will only have one of these at the end of the game. So even though you could probably get this up to like 10 points, or maybe even more than that, it's, you're not probably going to have a ton of fur traders. Maybe two at most. Still, that does keep you from getting too many victory points with it, for sure. And that still makes it so you have to buy a ton of travelers, and that's assuming there's other traveler cards you're playing with besides just Churl. You'd have to also be playing with some of them from Adventures. Or the other one that I made, or should I say I haven't made yet, officially made yet, or should I say unofficially made yet, for Snowline. And that is it for Dominion Snowline. So I hope you guys liked my cards for that I've created for Snowline. And uh, I thought it was pretty thematic in all, in all regards. Most of the cards go pretty well with the theme. So I hope you guys liked the video, and see you guys next time.